my name is Sara, and I have decided to talk about the Amarna system, which was the, one of the first signs of diplomacy. So I would just like to emphasize that I'm not an expert on the topic, but merely a student with a great deal of interest about um, the topic. So it's just informative. And uh, so if you have, if you think that I've made a mistake, please correct, correct me or ask uh, any questions. And I'm not trying to persuade you of my agenda or convince you of anything else. So um, the outline of this presentation uh, goes as such. So the first is the um, context of the Amarna period and the growing civilizations. And then the second is the characteristics of the system. And uh, lastly, how it has kind of impacted today's uh, diplomacy and uh, yeah. So I chose this topic because um, I stumbled across a course called War and Diplomacy in the Ancient World uh, as I was searching for summer, um, summer courses at different colleges. And I read the description and I was extremely interested and I couldn't wait to start. So I just researched and I came across this topic and I wanted to share it with other people. So um, what was the Amarna period like? So ancient Egypt in the 13th century BCE, Egypt during this time shifted in its religious and political system by Pharaoh Akhenaten, uh, claiming that the religion, the religion should be uh, monotheistically structured and not uh, polytheistic. And he claimed that um, Aten was the primary god. And so uh, this changed the values and arts of the state, of the Egyptian state. And uh, not only was the art, the art were the arts developed, but uh, the king established a new capital city called the Horizon of the Aten, encouraging reforms and thus political strategies as well. So other civilizations during the Amarna period. Um, so it began in the 14th century BCE, where the religions, um, many kingdoms began to develop. Uh, kingdoms grew as city-states with self-governing uh, bodies at the same time through expansion and some signs of contact between kingships the rising powers became apparent so uh, here in this um, in this map you can see the Heronians who created the state of Mitanni dominated north Mesopotamia and um, and the Kassites in the south um, controlled most of Babylonia and the Assyrians expanded their control in all in most of Syria. So um, diplomacy before um, was um, very different. Um, and while they still did have some forms of diplomacy, um, and um, most notably dating back to the relations between the neighboring kingdoms of Ebla and Mali in Syria. Um, there wasn't really a true set of international languages, and there weren't many set in stone structures of how to conduct uh, diplomatic structure uh, practices. Uh, instead, uh, letters uh, of communication before were much more secretive and less formal, and it was known more as like a brotherhood of the kings. So it was based on relations and not specific structures. So what is the Amarna system? So the Amarna system dated back to the 13th century BCE. Um, in 1887, uh, 382 tablets were found and um, they discovered that the systems can be, the letters can be divided into sub two subdivisions. Uh, the first concerns foreign powers that dealt with Egypt, more or less based on equality. In uh, Mesopotamian orders, these, uh, those who truly seek to form alliances were when kings emphasized the idea of brotherhood and mutual agreements. Um, however, there was also those that dealt with kingdoms from Syria and Southern uh, Palestine, whom were Egyptian uh, vassals. So um, they were all written in cuneiform structure, which has just recently became widely seen as um, an international language 
um, of a cosmop cosmopolitan uh, culture. Oh, and the second subdivision was more administrative ones. So those were within the Egyptian empire. And those were used, uh, were also written as correspondences, inventories, orders to manage uh, subordinate vassals and other foreign correspondences for peace treaties, trade agreements, and most important marriage agreements. Because that was how they emphasize alliances. So these two are examples um, of these Amarna letters. And um, these are one of the 382 tablets found. So um, most of the letters found were in, um, all of them were in cuneiform, but most of them were in the Akkadian language, was, which was, uh, which determined the lingua franca of the region. Um, the first one on the left was written by the king of Assyria, where he offers gifts to the king of Egypt um, with the goal of, of creating this, um, creating an open relationship of communication with the powers of the region, with the power of the region. Um, the next one was between the city of Tyre uh, and between the king and the Vasa ruler who expected protection for his loyalty to the Egyptian empire. So how did the system set the stage for diplomacy? So the system allowed for the first peace treaty in the world. The treaty uh, seen here in this image ended the conflict between the Egyptians and um, the Hittites. The two kingdom, the two kings understood that they, neither one of them could gain advantage um, of the other and the best course was the path of peace. And so they formed this um, treaty with the help of the Amarna system that allowed for easy and streamlined communication. And through peace, allow, it allowed for the, the, a new kingdom to rise. So its significance. Um, the Amarna system allowed for more relationships between, um, ex between large kingdoms and the great powers. So because of these formed alliances, neither one of them, neither um, kingdoms required to put so much energy into warfare and conflict, instead could promote trade and, and economic activity um, between faraway kingdoms and which allowed for these city-states to develop much more streamlined and rapidly. The system continued to be used for approximately 100 years um, after the period and um, set the path, set the way for more complex forms of diplomacy that we know today. Thank you. If you'd like to learn more about the topic, I have um, provided you with the sources that were used and um, yeah, thank you.